Hey what's up, today we're going to create this reindeer headband. This video is part of a Christmas giveaway that I'm hosting in collaboration with XP Pen. Follow this tutorial, post it on your Instagram and you will have a chance to win one of three drawing tablets from XP Pen. All the information you need to join is in the description down below. So yeah, let's do this. Okay, before we start off we need to activate an add-on. So go into edit, preferences, click on add-ons and search for extra objects and then activate add mesh extra objects and we'll start with the headband so press shift a mesh add a plane tap to go into edit mode and then press s and y that's an x and we'll scale it down on the x-axis press ctrl r and scroll up to three to four lines and then we'll press 3 to go into face select or the little icon here. Select the middle face, press O to activate proportional editing, and then press G and Z, and then we'll move it up. And then we'll make it a nice curve like that. And then we can press G and Z and we'll move it down to have to go into edit mode. A to select all, Alt E, and then extrude faces on normals. And leave the edit mode and press Ctrl 3 to add a subdivision modifier and then press tab to go into edit mode Ctrl R and we'll add a loop cut there and then we'll right click and shade out a smooth okay then we'll create the ears so press shift A and mesh and we'll add a cube press Ctrl 3 to subdivide it tab to go into edit mode and S and X and we'll Scale it down a tiny bit and we can also press O to deactivate proportional editing. And with face select, we'll select the top face and then press S and Y and we'll scale it down in the Y axis. And we'll select the front face and press I to inset and then E to extrude and then I to inset again. And then in the front, we'll place a loop cut right there and then a loop cut horizontal and we'll move it all the way down. Can leave edit mode, right click, shade auto smooth, then press 1 on your numpad or press your tilde key, go into your view menu, go into front view, and we'll select everything, press R, Z, 90 minus, so we look at it from the front, and we can select the ear, and then we'll move it into position, press tab to go into edit mode, and we'll scale it down, and then we can place it right there. And I think that is going to look pretty good. We can always change the sizing of this. We might make the band a tiny bit bigger later on to make the horns fit, but we'll see how it looks once the horns are in place. And then press 7 on your numpad or through your view menu, go into top view and then press G and Y. And then we'll place it right there on the band. There, that looks great. Then go to your modifiers tab, add a modifier, and we'll add a mirror modifier and then for mirror object we'll click on our headband and then we'll change the axis to y and then we have an ear on each side okay now we'll go and add the antlers i've been calling them horns but of course they're antlers which is the correct word for it so i will be saying antlers from now on um we'll go into front view and then we'll press shift a mesh and we'll add single third add single third this is why we needed the extra objects add-on. This will just add one vert to our scene. So now if we go to first select and we can press G and then we can place it right there. And then from here, we will create our antler. So if you now press E to extrude, we'll extrude again. And here you can kind of form the antlers just the way you like it, or you can follow my example. Just keep on extruding. And we'll go there and then go one more left and then maybe one more there. Okay, I think that looks great. Now we'll add a modifier and we'll add a skin modifier. Now press A to select all and then press Ctrl A and then we can make our modifier a tiny bit thinner. There, they want it kind of chunky and then we'll select this place it inside of our headband 
and now we can leave edit mode and then press ctrl 3 to add a subdivision modifier and then now we can kind of play around with how the antlers look so we can just move this around and then we know there's a, a vert here we can uh, see it with toggle x-ray the vert here and then with ctrl a we can just make that one a tiny bit thinner so it doesn't look that uh, peeled up there and we can move that down and then make that a bit thinner and maybe make this one longer and then we'll make it a bit thinner here Make that one a tiny bit longer, maybe move it up a bit. You can even make them a bit thicker if you want the endpoints. Here you can just uh, let your creativity go wild and form them the way you want it. Maybe make it a tiny bit thicker there, move it down a tiny bit more. There. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna now add a mirror modifier so we can see how it looks if it's uh, two of them. So if we go to add modifier and we'll add a mirror and there we go and then we can see and yeah i like how that looks so now we can go to our skin modifier and we'll apply it and then we'll select our endless and we'll right click and we'll shade it auto smooth that's perfect okay then it's time to add a camera to our scene so we'll go into front view First we'll add a background, so shift A, mesh, add a plane, press R, X, and 90, and then G and Y, and we'll move it back. Go into edit mode and scale it up. We'll go back into front view, we'll leave edit mode, and now we'll add our camera. So shift A, and then add a camera, and then G and Y, move it back. Zero on your numpad or through your view menu, go to view camera. Go into the output settings, we'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. And then with G, and then set twice, you can move it back and forwards. Then we can make it fit. There. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so now we can select our objects. And we'll move it there. And then maybe R and set, and we'll rotate it a bit. And R twice, so we can even rotate it up a bit. And basically just give it an angle you think looks good scale it up there i think that looks pretty cool yeah i like how that looks okay so then now we'll, we'll press z and we'll select rendered and we'll start adding our lights so if we press shift a light and we'll add an area light and then we'll press rx 90 minus and then G and Y will move it behind our object and then we'll go into our light settings and then we'll change it to a thousand to start off with. G and Z move it down a tiny bit. Maybe even 1250. We can change this later, but I think this looks pretty good for now. We'll press Shift A and we'll add another area light and then we'll press G and X, G and Z to move it up and then press period and change your pivot point to 3D cursor and then we can press RX45 then RZ45 minus and we'll see maybe press R and then X twice so you move it up and down and you can kind of point it a bit better at your object R and Z and maybe move it backwards a tiny bit with G and Z twice we'll add change our power to 200 let's see how that looks looks uh, pretty good yeah for now so then we'll press shift the r z 120 so we have a light on the other side and then r x twice move it down a tiny bit and then maybe change the power to 100 so it's a bit weaker i also don't like that it's um, giving us a shadow on our background so i'm just gonna move that one back a bit there we go okay yeah that looks pretty neat okay then we'll uh, point a uh, light at our background so we'll have a nice gradient there so press shift a light area light rx 90 and then g and y and move it towards your background and then we'll change our shape to disc and we'll change the size to three and then we'll start off with a power of 500 and now let's have a look yeah that looks good yeah i like that okay let's uh, start adding some materials and see uh, what it will look like so we'll select the background go to one material tab add a new material we'll call this material background 
For our base color, we will name it E7DC94. And then we'll add the brown color to our headband. So we'll name that brown. Which will have a color of B77267. Our ears are going to be the same color. So if we select the ears and then shift click the one that already has the brown material, we can press Ctrl L and then link materials. Just like that. And now we kind of want the inside of this ear to be pink. So if we select the ear and we go into edit mode, then we can select this face here. And if we go select, and then we go to select more, we can add a new material slot here. Add a new material, I will assign it. There we go. So now it's white, so we'll change it to a nice pink color, which is D26B9B. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, then we'll add a nice beige color to our antlers. Also, feel free to change this to any colors you want. I know some of these Christmas antlers are like red and the band is green, so you, you can just go crazy. I just like the more natural colors on this piece. Um, we'll add a new color here. We'll call it beige. And then we'll change our base color to E7D1AB. Okay, now there's just two more things to do. And that is changing our world color. So if we go to our world tab and we'll change the color to 9D614E. And then we go to our render settings and then we can change our color management. And then we'll change the look to like a high contrast. And I kind of want to see what it will look like if we change our render engine to cycles, device to GPU compute, and then we'll change our samples in the viewport to 128 and our render samples maybe to 512. And then I do feel that I maybe want to increase the lighting on the background a tiny bit. So I'm going to move it back a tiny bit, make it just a tiny bit stronger as well. Maybe like that. And then have it there. Yeah, I think that looks great. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or requests, drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to see your result, so be sure to tag me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. See you soon!